Hi everyone, welcome back to Harry John's YouTube channel. So today we're going to siphon the blackberry wine into a demi John. So this is the second part, this is known as secondary fermentation. The bit we did before in the fermentation bucket is the primary fermentation. So let's show you what we've got. So here we are. So you may notice there are two buckets now. That's because in my spare time, as well as making the uh, blackberry wine, which is coming along beautifully, I have also just started, just yesterday, and I did the yeast this morning, a plum and blackberry wine. Now it may, like, may not look like much, it's basically it's got half the amount of the blackberries that are in here, and then the other half is just plums from my granddad's tree. And I'm not a massive fan of plums, even though they're good for you, so I always try and eat them and do things with them. But it smells absolutely gorgeous, so I am quite confident with this one. So stay tuned, I'll keep you updated with that, but this is just a little side project. The main one is the blackberry wine. So what we're going to do is we've got another bucket here. Um, and then we've got this, I think it's like a muslin cloth or a draining bag. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pour the blackberries and what the must or wine, whatever it is at this stage, is going to get poured through this um, draining bag and it's going to go into this big bucket. And then from that, we're going to siphon it from this bucket into there. The reason we need another bucket it's just so we can get rid of all these, uh, all the fruit now. So the fruit's done its job, it's still going to get a little bit stronger but we've got to separate it now. We just want the liquid plus it's going to look lovely in here with the bubbler and the uh, cork on top. It's going to be great. Alright so we'll just jump into the future again. So I'm going to strain it into there and I'll show you what it looks like in that bucket before we put, put it into the demi -jump. So here we are, it's all been drained out, there's no fruit in there now, it's just all the juice, the sugars, the yeast, so it's time to add it all into this demijohn. So this is a one gallon demijohn, we can see this just comes above the one gallon mark, or is it just below, not 100%, but we'll be absolutely fine anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this siphon tube, oh, this end is going to go into the bucket and then this tap we're going to give it a good suck on the end and then it's going to go straight into the demijohn here and we're going to fill it up I'd say uh, just above this line here so you've got a bit of a gap there because we don't want it fall right to the top because it can bubble through the actual bubbler then so give it about I'd say just under an inch below the cork or maybe about an inch you should be fine um, so yeah, just be careful with this kind of wine as well. I think it can stain quite well, and I'm wearing a white t-shirt today, which isn't a great idea. But <clears throat> it's like my lazy t-shirt, so if I do get anything on it, it's not too bad anyway. I don't wear it out much. All right, so we'll come back in a moment when that's done. So here we are, there goes. So all the juice has been transferred from the big bucket in a mess over by the sink into the demi jar. So this is looking and smelling really nice now. I really like the colour. Uh, it smells good and yeah, it's really pretty. So it's a, a Bordeaux. This is the first red wine that I've ever done. I've done rosés and I've done whites. Um, and yeah, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. It's cool. Um, excellent. So the bubble is on now. And if we're lucky, what we might notice is that this is gonna. This is basically an airlock. Um, so gas can now escape from the uh, demijohn itself, the wine and the yeast, uh, so the sugar, the must and the yeast are still doing their thing, creating a little bit more of alcohol and the bubbler lets any gases from inside come out, which you'll see bubble through and then it stops anything else coming in. So I'll just put this lid on a bit more, that might help. Um, that's it, so no bacteria can get into this now. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> One handed, oh, there we go. So no bacteria can get in and this can breathe nice and lovely now. So this is great. 
So we leave this now for a minimum of three months. So I'm looking to drink this around uh, Christmas or give it out as gifts at Christmas. Um, so yeah, a minimum of three months, but the more you leave it, the longer you leave it, uh, the better it will turn out overall. They just, wines just get better with lots of time. So that's pretty much it guys. So I don't think we're going to see any bubbles. So it's going to come through there. And it, you'll see it sort of pushing through and it'll bubble. And then you can sometimes, I mean I've only just done this so it may take some time to settle. But you'll start seeing lots of bubbles come up the sides on these. Uh, but I'll give it some time. I'll try and do an update. And yeah, have a great day guys and happy brewing. See you soon. Thanks. Just a quick one guys, hopefully you can see all these bubbles rising to the sides, I think that's focusing quite well. This is what it should look like, uh, it only took an, about half an hour after I finished making the previous videos, you can see that bubble going as well. Alright great, have a fantastic day guys, um, any questions please leave them in the comments below uh, or feel free to private message me uh, and have a great day, thanks for tuning in.